Okay, so you've written a song and you've spent however many hours, days, weeks, months on it, and now you want to record it, you want to produce it, which means that you want to have some sort of recorded version of the song that you can either share with your friends and family or ultimately something that you can sell. So I'm going to hopefully give you some of the things that I've come across that will helpfully aid you in the process of producing a song. So the first thing I always think of before I record a song, before I produce a song is, what am I going to record? In my case, I do a lot of vocals and a lot of classical guitar. So I know if I'm going to record my vocals, then I actually have to warm up my vocals three to four days before I even go to record. The reason for that I'm not a natural singer. I consider myself somebody who's like a guitar player who happens to sing. And so it's not something that will just come naturally out of me. So I really need to be practicing and warming up three to four days before I'm going to go and turn on my gear and start recording my vocals. Back when I was living in LA and I was gigging five to six nights a week, my vocals were warm all the time. So that wasn't an issue. But now I'm not out performing as much. I'm mostly here in the studio writing. So I'm primarily clicking a mouse. That seems to be the most exercised muscle in my body is my index finger. And so when I have to record vocals, I need those three to four days just to feel comfortable in front of a microphone and open up these vocal cords. If I have to record guitar, I'll warm up about 30 minutes to an hour. I'll make sure all the strings are in tune and I'll make sure that the strings are new-ish. I don't like the sound of brand new nylon strings on a classical guitar, it's too bright. And I don't like the sound of dead strings, it's too dull, there's no life to them. So I'll take a look at my strings and then I'll make sure, okay, how old are they? If I'm starting to see sort of like copper indentations in them, I know they're too old. And I'll play the strings just to hear the vibrancy of the strings, the life inside of them. If they're too old and I need to replace them, I'll replace them with a fresh set of strings. I'll tune it up. And then with classical guitars, honestly, it takes about three days for them to settle anyways. And then I'll play that guitar for three to four days so the strings kind of get a little bit of usage in and it sort of takes away that bright edge, that sort of 3K thing that fresh nylon strings have. And then I'm ready to start recording. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it's simply to let you know, be aware, what are you going to record? Are you recording your vocals, a guitar, a ukulele? Are you somebody who wants to get into DJ, electronica, EDM stuff? Uh, then if that's the case, you don't have to worry about warming up anything. You connect your keyboard controller or whatever MIDI device you have and you press record and you get going. So once you figure out what you're going to record, the next step is how are you going to record it? How are you going to capture that sound? So for example, if it's an acoustic instrument like a guitar or a ukulele, you're gonna need a microphone. Uh, same thing for vocals. If it's just an electric guitar or if it's a MIDI device, then you can connect directly into your audio interface. Or in some cases, you can just connect directly into your computer, depending on the device. In my case, I have my nylon guitar. When I record that, I use this microphone here, which is a Bees Knees Lulu Tube. This is a great desert island mic. So if you just have to record honestly anything this mic sounds phenomenal i did a cover of a peter paul and mary song recording my acoustic guitar and my vocals just using this mic and it sounded phenomenal if i had a hammer i'd hammer in the morning I'd hammer in the evening All over this land I'd hammer out danger I'd hammer out a warning I'd hammer out love between My brothers and my sisters All over this land Since gotten another mic for my vocals but I still use this one for all acoustic guitar work, whether it's the nylon guitar, the acoustic, ukulele, charango, 
anything that requires an instrument to be in front of a microphone, this is what I use. This thing currently goes for about, I think, 550 Australian dollars. I think American, that would maybe come to 500. I don't know what the conversion rate is. In Canadian, it's pretty close to on par. I think it's maybe like 525 Canadian, and then you've got to pay import costs and duties and all that stuff. So you're looking at about $650 for this microphone Canadian. You don't have to get this microphone. There's a cheaper microphones, like there's the Rode NT1, I believe is the model number, which I think goes for maybe 300 US. I've heard recordings on that that just sounded phenomenal. You don't need the best microphone. I suffer from gear-itis, which is, I think, all of us musicians eventually catch. And it's the whole, I need the best of the best in order to produce the, the best music. But all that ends up doing is that just has you getting into a loop of wanting to get all this gear and get more gear. And then all of a sudden you realize you're not creating music. So just be mindful of gear-itis and to try not to come down with that very contagious flu. The other thing to keep in mind, if you are recording with a microphone, that when you go to record whatever the source is, and the source could be a vocal, it could be a guitar, when using a microphone, that, that's not the only thing getting recorded. It's not just your voice, it's not just your guitar. It's also the room. Now the room is gonna be a big player in whatever it is you're recording, and if you don't have a good sounding room, and most of us don't, because let's be honest, we're all inside of our bedrooms. This is just a bedroom that I've turned into my studio. If you don't like the sound of your room, you probably don't want it recorded into the microphone. So keep that in mind. If you're recording vocals, whatever room you're inside, that room gets recorded into the microphone, gets eventually transferred into your computer, and it's very difficult to get that sound out. So. One of the best things you can do is just try to muffle your room as much as possible. So you're trying to remove the room sound. If you can, you can get into a closet. I had a studio where I had a closet and I just padded it with a bunch of sheets and pillows and that sounded fine, honestly. Uh, I didn't mind that at all. I've done that a few times. This studio here, I've put up a bunch of foam. It's okay. It's not the best foam in the world and studio foam insulation can get really, really expensive. If you're not using a microphone, you don't have to worry about the room. If you're using a MIDI device like a keyboard controller like this one behind me, that gets plugged in directly into my audio interface and that gets plugged into my computer. You don't have to worry about the room being recorded. It's just going to take the signal direct and bring it into the computer. Same thing if you have like, what is it called, machine from uh, Native Instruments, but basically it's those sort of like pad looking devices that have those push buttons. Pretty cool. So if you're into DJ music or electronica, EDM, any of those sort of styles, you don't have to worry about the room because your signal's going to go direct in. Same thing if you're recording an electric guitar that's going directly into your audio interface or a bass. So often, if I'm recording with my bass, I'm just going to go directly into my audio interface. I'm not going to use an amplifier. Amps are great. I just find they're very noisy, but it's definitely easier to just take an electric guitar or an electric bass, plug directly into your audio interface and use an amp sim, which I know they don't sound as good as amplifiers. They don't. And I am a tone guy and I get it. But for me, it, it always comes workflow and then tone. So if the tone is so great, but it slows down my workflow, I actually won't end up using the device, whether it's an amplifier or something as uh, interesting and cool as a Kemper. I had a Kemper, sounded amazing. I just couldn't stand the workflow. So now I plug in my electric guitar into my audio interface. I open up an amp sim, something from Native Instruments, I think Guitar Rig 6. That sounds fine. Um, and I press record and then I'm done. The next thing is what are you going to be recording into? You're going to need some sort of computer, an iPad, or even an iPhone. So it doesn't really matter anymore. Everything is sounding so good. If you've heard of the artist Steve Lacey, this is a Grammy nominated artist who recorded all of his music on his iPhone 6 using an iRig. Uh, I think you can pick them up from IK Multimedia for like $50. Amazing. So he literally went into a little booth. 
that was soundproofed, I think, and plugged in his guitar into his little iRig device that plugged into his iPhone 6. And he used GarageBand, which is free, is a free app that you can download. And he made his beats, he made his songs, layering his ideas. And it was great because for him, he could take his music anywhere he wanted to. It was on the go, it was on the fly. If he wanted to show somebody some of his beats, he could just take out a cell phone and show them. And that's actually how he got one of his tracks in with Kendrick Lamar. So honestly, everything is sounding so good today. And even the question about what microphone should I get, these new MacBook Pros, the M1 MacBook Pros, like the M1 Max, I think, the microphone on these things sounds incredible. You can do so much with these new Macs. And I will show you a, a video of an artist who just recorded through the microphone in the MacBook Pro, and it sounded amazing. So you heard me talk about audio interface. So an audio interface is sort of that go-between between whatever source you're recording and then it being captured and recorded into the computer. So source being like if you have to record, let's say uh, you've got a MIDI controller, this guy here, you have a piano. This piano is a MIDI controller. And then you need to get it connected to the computer. Some MIDI com controllers, really basic ones, just go directly into the computer with a USB cable. That's great. Uh, if you have a microphone like this one, uh, my audio interface is that Discrete 8, that silver box right there from Antelope Audio. It allows me to connect multiple devices. But honestly, I only ever record one thing at a time. So if I just had an interface with two ends, i.e. I can connect my microphone for guitar and my other microphone for vocals, that's all I need. And that allows you to connect whatever device you have to your computer. Again, if it's just an iPhone, for example, you can get that iRig from IK Multimedia for like 50 bucks, and that allows you to connect an electric guitar, for example. But there's a whole range of audio interfaces ranging from that $50 iRig all the way up to the tens of thousands of dollars. Um, just really expensive stuff, stuff I will never need. Think about the audio interface. There's stuff from Focusrite that's got some really good affordable options. I think they're Redline or maybe it's their Scarlet line. I forget. There's also the Universal Audio. I had their audio interface before. They sound great. They come with some plugins as well, which is awesome. Again, I don't think much of it matters. Everything these days just sounds great. Start with something really simple, doesn't take a lot, and get busy. So after you get your audio interface, you're going to need a preamp. What is a preamp? It's short basically for preamplifier. The reason why you need a preamplifier or a preamp is because most devices, most sources, whether it's a microphone or it's an electric guitar or even a synthesizer, aren't loud enough for a standard line level output. Microphone signals are usually way below the operating signal. So they're usually 30 to 60 decibels below. Uh, guitars, again, they're about 20 to 30 decibels below, and even a synthesizer can be negative 10 decibels below the operating standard, which is plus 4 dBUs. So everything you record with is going to need a preamp. The good news is most audio interfaces come with a preamp, so you're not going to need one. Anything from the cheapest Focusrite Scarlet series a Mo2, Universal Audio, if you're starting to get into sort of the more expensive audio interfaces, all the way up to the Antelope, the Apogees, whatever device you choose to buy, those devices all come built in with preamps. So everything needs a preamp, but the good news is everything comes with a preamp. Do you need one? Yes and no, because it already comes with it. After you have your audio interface and you have your computer, you're gonna need a DAW. DAW stands for Digital Audio workstation. That's just a fancy way of musicians saying app. You'll see over here I'm recording into Logic. This is the DAW or the app that I use. It's called Logic Pro 10. I think it's up to 10 point, 10 point something. I don't know. It's great. I love it. Costs about 250 US, I think. Um, and it comes with a whole mess of sounds. It comes with tons of apps. I'm telling you like literally tens of thousands of sounds. You could buy this and you would never have a lack of sounds. If you have no budget, there's Reaper, which is free. If you're on Mac, they comes free with GarageBand, which I believe comes with sounds as well and some apps. 
There's other free apps. Cubase has a free version, which is wonderful. I believe Ableton has a light version. Ableton's great if you're sort of going down the electronica EDM world. Okay, so let's say you've recorded everything. It's in your DAW, you've got your tracks done. Let's say you recorded your vocals, your guitar. Uh, let's say you're just doing a singer songwriter version. So you really just wanted to do guitar and vocals, great. Now you have to kind of get a little basic mix going, but how are you gonna listen back to it? If you're just on your iPhone doing the whole Steve Lacey approach, you can just use your earbuds. Listen to those, they help you listen closely. If the balance between the guitar and the vocals is okay. If you want something a little bit more advanced, you can get some studio headphones. I have two sets. I use the Sennheiser HD280 Pros, I think that's the model. And those are closed back headphones. So what that means is there's no bleed that comes out of the headphones. So if I'm recording guitar and I need to listen to a click while I'm recording, it doesn't bleed out of the headphones and go into the microphone. That's a big issue. So you really want very quiet headphones when you're recording. For mixing, I have my Bayer Dynamic DT990s. Those are great for mixing. They're sort of open back, which means, I don't even know what that means, but it allows me to, to kind of get a good mix going. They sound phenomenal and I can hear so much more detail. I wouldn't suggest the Sennheisers for mixing. They're a bit bass heavy. They're great for listening to music, uh, but not for mixing. You could also get some studio speakers. I have these ones here, which are the Neumann something, something. I don't know. I got them 50% off. They sound great. Honestly, when it comes to mixing, once you have everything recorded, a lot of people listen to their stuff on their iPhones, their iPads, and then their cars. And the rule of thumb is if it sounds great on terrible speakers or terrible earbuds, it's probably gonna sound great just about anywhere. Traditionally in studios, they would have three sets of these studio monitors, these big speakers, just to compare all the different mixes between them. They'd have two sets of great sounding speakers, and then they'd have one set of speakers that sounded really awful, and it was always the Yamaha NS10s. You can't even buy these anymore. Because they wanted to be able to make sure that if the mix sounded good on those really horrible speakers, then it should technically translate well into any other source. What I do now is I just go down into my car, I'll export an MP3 of the song, I'll go down and listen to it in my car. If it sounds good there, it usually sounds pretty good anywhere else. I'll also listen to it on my headphones if I remember to do that. Earbuds is also great. So as far as like a source for what you're listening to when it comes to the mix down, yeah, you could get really expensive studio speakers, you, or you could go the middle road and just get a really good set of uh, headphones and I've heard some mixes done on headphones that honestly sounded amazing. So there's a lot of sort of bad opinions on mixing with headphones. Apparently it's a big no-no in the music production industry, but honestly, I've heard film scores, surround sound mixes mixed with headphones, and they sounded amazing. If you go listen to my cover again of the uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary song. It's a song about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. I mixed all those on headphones. In fact, I mixed them on the Sennheisers, the closed back headphones, which is a big no-no because they're too bass heavy. So you don't actually hear the bass properly. And, but still the mix, in my opinion, came out just fine. So really it's about comparing different mixes. If you can, like if you have a smart TV, you can take the mix and listen to it on your TV. My friend does this. He writes a lot of music for television. He just goes downstairs, puts it on his smart TV, listens to it there. If you can hear it, it sounds good. Bob's your uncle. So probably the last bit of advice I'd give you is write, 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 and write some more. This whole process of producing music and producing music and producing music is wonderful for not only developing our chops and our skill when it comes to production, but also in developing our ear for what sounds good to us and creating sort of our own sound. So that's sort of just a basic overview of what I think about when I go to record, when I'm getting ready for production. So this is just some of the few basic things to think about. I'm going to continue up in my next video and we're going to develop this conversation some more. So don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you and have a great day. Bye.